Hi, welcome to this time of worship together. I'm Pastor Jason, lead pastor of Tuckerton United Methodist Church. It is a delight and honor to share this time of worship with you today. Thanks for taking the time which I consider to be beneficial for our spiritual growth. If this is your first time joining us or you are a recurring viewer, here are the next steps I would like you to take. If this is your first time joining us, please feel free to fill the connection card. There are two ways to do this. You can text the word new to the phone number 609-293-3188, or you can visit the website tuckerinumc.org slash new. You can find more information about our church right there at our the website, tuckerinumc.org. I also invite you to visit our Facebook page, hit the like button so you can be up to date with the latest happenings of our community. Last but not least, visit our YouTube channel and subscribe so you don't miss any of the services and other content we create with you in mind. Don't forget to click the notification bell so you get notified. These easy steps will keep you connected to our TUMC family. Today, we honor all father figures. The celebration of Father's Day may not resonate with everyone, but we should show appreciation to the fathers and father's figures who have blessed our lives. Of course, no father, father figure is perfect. If we think we are deprived of things when our relationships do not live up to expectations, we should present them to God in prayer. God is present with us in all situations, and we should praise and give God thanks for those who bless our lives and pray for the transformation of those who do not. Today's story of a father who was disrespected and still continue to love his sons and forgave them is a reminder of God's love for us and an opportunity to father figures to learn from him. So as we praise God on this special day, let us join in the call to worship. We are called to this place to celebrate God's wondrous love. We are called to honor those who have thought and guided us. For all those who have gone before, who have been our guides, we offer thanks and praise. For our mothers and fathers, we thank you, O Lord. All of us are shaped by the relationship or lack of relationship with our fathers. For some of us, God's love fills in the empty spaces our fathers left behind. On this day, when we remember what it means to have a father or be a father, we recognize the importance of fathers in our communities. We pledge as a congregation to love and nurture the fathers among us so that they will manifest the love of God in all that they do. Amen. So join me in a word of prayer. O oh Lord, our God, you are worthy of all our praise. You are the God who never fails to keep his promises. And we thank you for this day and the opportunity to worship together. We thank you that in Jesus' life, death, and resurrection, we see your love, justice, mercy, provision, and victory. You are the God who lifts up those who are weighed down. You are the God who provides for your children. Loving God, you invite us again and again to redefine what love looks like among us. Continue to expand our understanding of you. Expand our sight to see each person as one who you love. As you welcome us, help us to show your expansive welcome in our community and beyond. Inhabit our praises as we gather together today. Today, we give you thanks for fathers and father figures. We praise those fathers who have striven to balance the demands of work, marriage, and children with an honest awareness of both joy and sacrifice. We praise those fathers who, lacking a good model for a father, have worked to become a worthy and virtuous father. We praise those fathers who, by their own account, were not always there for their own children 
but will continue to offer those children now grown their love and support. As well, let us pray for those fathers who have been wounded by words and action of their children. We praise those fathers who, despite marital discord, have remained in their children's life. We praise those fathers whose children are adopted and whose love and support has nurtured a thriving life. We praise those fathers who, as stepfathers, freely choose the obligation of fatherhood and earn their stepchildren's love and respect. We praise those fathers who have lost a child to death and continue to hold the child in their heart. We praise those men who have no children but cherish the next generation as if they were their own. We praise those men who have fathered us in the role of mentors and guides. We praise those men who are about to become fathers. May they openly delight in their children. And we praise those fathers who have died, but live on in our memory and whose love continues to nurture us. May this day be a blessing to all. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us join together and praise our Lord through song. Oh, 
It's my joy to honor you in all I do. I honor you. Amen. We praise God's holy name. Join me in the prayer for illumination. Lord, thank you for being the God of our lives. Thank you for being the one who throughout time has loved all people and who has also invited and called us to be your own. May we remember this love and may change us. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your spirit that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. It is in your name that we gather and pray. Amen. Today's scripture reading, we find it in the New Testament, in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 15, and we are going to read from verse 11 all the way to verse 24. A man had two sons. The younger son told his father, I want my share of your estate now before you die. So his father agreed to divide his wealth between his sons. A few days later, this younger son packed all his belongings and moved to a distant land, and there he wasted all his money in wild living. About the time his money ran out, a great famine swept over the land and he began to starve. He persuaded a local farmer to hire him, and the man sent him into his fields to feed the pigs. The young man became so hungry that even the pots he was feeding the pigs looked good to him but no one gave him anything. When he finally came to his senses, he said to himself, at home even the higher servants have food enough to spare, and here I am dying of hunger. I will go home to my father and say, Father, I have sinned against both heaven and you, and I am no longer worthy of being called your son. Please take me on as a higher servant. So he returned home to his father, and while he was still a long way off, his father saw him coming. Filled with love and compassion, he ran to his son, embraced him, and kissed him. His son said to him, Father, I have sinned against both heaven and you, and I am no longer worthy of being called your son. But his father said to the servants, Quick, bring the finest robe in the house and put it on him. Get a ring for his fingers and sandals for his feet, and kill the calf we have been fattening. We must celebrate with a feast, for this son of mine was dead and has now returned to life. He was lost, but now he is found. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks and praise be to God. Today in the U.S. is Father's Day. The first event in this country honoring only fathers was held on July 5th, 1908, as a result of a tragedy in West Virginia. A mine had exploded and killed 362 men the previous December. A church in a nearby town held a special service in memory of the men who had lost their lives. However, This was a one-time commemoration and not an annual holiday. The next year, across the country, in the state of Washington, another unfortunate situation was a catalyst for the pursuit to establish an official day to honor fathers. Sonora Smart Dot and her five siblings were raised by their father after their mother died in childbirth. Sonora thought fathers should be honored just as mothers were. On June 19, 1910, Father's Day became an official celebration across the state of Washington. The holiday slowly began to spread to other states. However, 62 more years passed before President Nixon signed a proclamation to make it a permanent federal holiday. The celebration of Father's Day may not resonate with everyone, but we should show appreciation to the fathers and father figures who have blessed our lives. For many, Father's Day is a day of celebration when children honor their fathers by giving gifts and spending time together. 
However, some may consider Father's Day to be a less joyous occasion if their fathers are absent from their lives or have a negative impact on their families. According to the National Center for Fathering, more than 20 million children live in a home without the physical presence of a father. Millions more have fathers that are present physically, but absent emotionally. Whether absent or present, all fathers and father figures are imperfect and make mistakes from time to time. God commands children to honor their parents despite their flaws and shortcomings. God also calls us to respect our parents and those in authority over us, even if we disagree with them sometimes. In a relationship based on mutual respect and forgiveness, parents and children can live in harmony as God desires while also honoring the Heavenly Father. Today we look at the story of a father who was disrespected, still continued to love his sons and forgave them. It's an opportunity to father figures to learn from him. A man who had two sons. The younger son was wild and rebellious. He wasn't going to do his chores and help run the family farm. He wanted to get away, see the sights, experience for himself all that the world had to offer. And so one day he went up to his dad and said, Father, give me my share of your property. Now there were three things wrong with this request. First, to ask for his inheritance before his father died was a slap in the face. It was as if he were saying, I wish you were there. Second, by asking for his inheritance now, he was separating himself from his brother. The farm will have to be divided, and obviously he intended to sell his part of the property. So much for the father's dream that his two sons will keep the family farm intact and work the land together. And third, to ask for his inheritance at this point was to break the rules of social etiquette and subject the whole family, especially the father, to ridicule. Be that as it may, the younger son asked his father for his share of the property, and it was such an unusual request and so out of line, you would have thought that the father would have simply said no. Instead, the father did what the son asked. He divided his property between his two sons. According to Jewish law, the older son got two-thirds and the younger son got one-third. And once the property was divided, the younger son sold his part of the property, took the money, and left home. He was off to see the world. The younger son was determined to exercise his freedom, and as painful as it must have been for his father to go along, he refused to stand in his way. He gave him what he asked for. So the younger son took the money and ran. And we have heard many sermons on his story and how he indulged in the world and spent his part of the inheritance to the point of being broke. I want us today to expand our imagination and try to see the father and his side of the story. The father who has a son who has cruelly treated him as if he were dead by grabbing his share of the inheritance while he was still very much alive. He should have been so mad that he should have banned his younger child for life. Still, we see a very different style of parenting from the father. And to see it, you need to use your imagination. Scripture tells us that his son decides to go back home one day. Now, while he was still far off, his father sees him coming. I don't think that his father just happened to glance down the road at the very moment his son happened to appear on it. I'm guessing and using my imagination that he stood there watching and waiting and imagining his son coming home on that road day after day after day after day. Imagine the father doing the chores of the day, 
trying to handle life with an older son who is mad at him and his brother. With workers who are probably trying to put a good face but talking behind his back. And a community who is constantly gossiping about what happened. Still, with all that is happening, this father is sitting in the front porch every day, drinking a cup of coffee, lifting a prayer for his son, and waiting with hope that one day he would return home. Not to punish him and make his life miserable, or to tell him, I told you so, but to give him a hug, love him, and forgive him. It could have been days, weeks, months doing that same routine every single day. Praying, waiting, hoping. So when the day comes that the son does appear, the father is there and ready. So ready he runs to him stops him before he can beg for help or say a single word, restores him to the family, and throws a great big party. He is a forgiving father. He pictures a family that is not broken, not bitter, not blaming. And forgiveness happens and reconciliation happens, but notice that it's not all love and hugs. The older son is downright chilly. He rejects the love and the party. Now the father forgives the bitter, resentful older son as well as the younger son. We see a father that loves, forgives, cares, prays, hopes, and celebrates. Brothers and sisters, these are the things that we should do every single day. Love your children, love your family, love your neighbor, love God, forgive and be forgiving, care for one another, pray for one another, hope for a better tomorrow and hope for God's blessings and celebrate. Bishop Scholl in annual conference invited us to celebrate. Celebration reflects an attitude of gratitude to God and others and give thanks for what we have instead of looking to what is next. Celebration also changes things. Now the father celebrated the fact that his son was lost and now he was home. The father gave thanks to God for his family and for protection. The father celebrated life. And like Bishop said, celebration changes things. So celebrate today. Celebrate what God is doing in your life. Celebrate father figures. Celebrate that God has cared for you even in painful and difficult moments. And as we celebrate God's love to all his children today, let us follow the example of a father who loves. Let us remember and be encouraged that God loves all his children. I don't know where you are today in this story. If you are one of the sons or the father, I do know God loves you and his spirit guides you. Someone gather up one-liners from the Old and the New Testament and strung them all together. And if you listen to them carefully, you will hear a loving message today. It reads like this, my child, you may not know me, but I know everything about you. I know when you sit down and when you rise up. I'm familiar with all your ways. Even the hairs on your head I've numbered. For you were made in my own image. In me you live and move and have your being. You are my child. I knew you even before you were conceived. I chose you when I planned creation. You were not a mistake, for all your days are written in my book. I determined the exact time of your birth and where you would live. I am also the Father who comforts you in all of your troubles. When you are brokenhearted, I am close to you. As a shepherd carries a lamb, I have carried you close to my heart. 
One day I will wipe away every tear from your eyes, and I will take away all the pain you have suffered on this earth. I am your father, and I love you even as I love my son Jesus. Come home, I'll throw the biggest party heaven has ever seen. I have always been father, and I will always be father. My question is, will you be my child? I am waiting for you. Come home. Sign with love everlasting, your heavenly Father. Amen. So let us celebrate God's love by sharing a meal together. Today we celebrate communion. Today is Communion Sunday at TUMC. And through communion, we experience God's love, grace, and mercy. Jesus shared this love with his disciples that night before he was arrested. The bread, his body that will be broken for us. The cup, his blood that will be shed for the forgiveness of our sins. It's a simple experience that we repeat about a powerful love we share. Do this in remembrance of me. So let's move into this holy time together. Whatever you have available to symbolize this sacrament, cracker, juice, bread, water, let's receive our gift of love and belonging together. Let's have a word of prayer. God, pour out your Holy Spirit on us and our gifts at our table today. Gifts like a piece of bread, wafer, cracker, juice or water make them be for us the body and blood of christ that we can be the body of christ redeem restore renew by your blood lord help us experience your love every day and share that love with others holy lord everything we need is found in you for those who are feeling broken bring restoration for those are, who are feeling weak, bring strength. For those who are weeping, bring joy. For those who have doubts, bring faith. For those who are feeling burdened, bring rest. For those who are feeling anxious, bring peace. May your Holy Spirit be with us through time and time again. You have called us, Lord, to be a light in this community. But we confess that we have failed you in many ways. Forgive us for focusing on things that matter little and how we pass by opportunities that could make a world of a difference in our community. Open us more fully into your mission that your holy being will shine through us, drawing all others into a closer communion with you. As you have shown mercy to us throughout all of our days, receive our thanksgiving and also hear the cries of each one who offers personal prayers in your name we are grateful for what you're doing in our community on how you are healing renewing restoring lives and we also have concerns for people who need your healing touch today we pray for them and for those within our hearts and we know you know what is needed and you will provide that healing we bring our lives to you and we lay our joys, our concerns, our celebration, our worries at your cross. We trust in you, our creator and savior. We pray in unity, Holy One, because we are people of hope, believing that suffering and death never have the last word. We continue, Lord, to pray for fathers and father figures, Bless them, protect them, guide them, and may they love, care, and hope, and celebrate their lives and their families and their children. Lord, rekindle and renew our faith. Give us renewed courage and renewed resolve to live lives worthy of your love, the love you gave us in Jesus. May we cling to your Son, that we may be among those who mount up with wings as eagles, who run and are not weary, who walk and do not faint. And we sum our prayer today by doing the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, the body of Christ broken for you. Receive it. And the blood of Christ shed for you. His praises One day when sin was As black as could be Jesus came forth to Be born of a virgin Dwell among men My example is He The Word became flesh And the light shined among us His glory Sins far away, Thank you, Lord. rising, he 
justified freely forever. One day he's coming for glorious day, for glorious day, glorious day, glorious day. Brothers and sisters, God shows us through scripture and in our own interaction the ways being in relationship with one another changes us and blesses us along our faith journey. As God pours abundantly into our lives, we thankfully and cheerfully respond with our gifts back to God. You can bless the ministry of Tuckerton United Methodist Church today by giving online at tuckertonumc.org give using the Tucker and UMC app or by mailing a check to the church to the address you see on the screen. Join me in a word of prayer to give thanks to God. Loving and merciful God, we give you thanks for your unconditional love. Help us to receive your grace and extend it to others. We offer to you all the resources you have provided seeking their multiplication and wisdom in using them to serve all your people. As we use these offerings to serve the children of God, may we also share with them the unconditional love you so freely give us. Grant us the understanding that we may be the only Jesus some people ever meet and reflect him to others. In Jesus' precious name, amen. As the Lord has given to you such peace and healing, now go into the world offering God's love and hope to others. Go in peace and remember that God goes with you. We pray all these things in the name of the one who is our creator, redeemer, and sustainer. Amen. Have a blessed week.